Okay, what is going on, Neon Nation? Welcome back to the Neon Arcade. Uh, I have a very special guest with me today, um, a guest that I don't think I've chatted with for probably like two or three years at this point. I think the last time uh, we talked, Jay, was maybe on the, in the podcast days, like 2019, 2020 at the max, but uh, it's super, super cool to like reconnect, and uh, I know we're going to be talking about the, the Edge Runners mission kit. But uh, for maybe some of the newer members of the channel, because we've, we've experienced quite a bit of growth in the few years here, uh, maybe just uh, mention your title, what Artol Sorian is, what you do for Artol Sorian, and a little bit of, of your background there. Sure, actually, and since the last time we talked, it's a different title, so that... There you go. Now, two, it's, a, it's cool to be here again. I'm glad to know that your channel has grown. I was worried because, you know, there was a, a big bounce in the lead up and then the game came out. And I know sometimes yeah. after a game comes out that for a few years, there's some downsides. But I'm sure you've been covering fallouts and definitely happened. Other such cool things. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Totally. Yeah. Um, my name is Jay Gray. I am the line manager for Cyberpunk over at Artels Orient Games. Artels Orient Games is a tabletop role playing game company. Uh, and creator of cool IPs like Cyberpunk, uh, which we first released uh, in 1988 in the first edition. And then in 91, 2020 came out, Cyberpunk 2020, which is uh, what Cyberpunk 2077 was based on uh, when they started making it. Uh, our latest edition is Cyberpunk Red, which came out a few years back. And uh, that is, uh, you know, we took the 2020 rules, we moved to setting up to 2045, so midway between 2020 and the 2070 era you see in the anime and the video game, and we streamlined the rules and uh, pet them up with uh, feedback from you know 30 years of play out in the field. Love it. So you guys have been iterating, listening to feedback, and then that, I guess Red was a product of uh, some of the feedback from all the way back in the... 80s. Yeah. Yeah, nothing nothing well, the nineties. Nothing play tests quite as much as uh you know, you, you can play test all you want, but nothing will, will play test the game better than the game being out in the wild and you with thousands yeah. of people playing it. Yeah. Cool. Love it. Okay. Um I wanted to get into just a little bit of uh you know what our whole story has been up to after the release of 2077 and even Phantom Liberty, and then we can get into the the Edge Runners mission kit specific questions. But like, what have you guys been doing? I know like there there have been some expansions for Red. You guys have been keeping up to date with Red. There's I've seen a lot of blog posts come out, um, you know, ever since Red was released. But like, what what's what have you guys been up to? Sure. Uh, well, first, uh, yeah, Cyberpunk Red has grown uh, every month, uh, more or less since release. We've released a free article on our website uh, usually between five and 20 pages long uh which is just uh, something new and neat that you can plug into your cyberpunk red game uh we just put out one with chase rules for people who want to do vehicle chases in april we did a crossover with uh, valhalla uh, the uh, cyberpunk bartending video game uh, mm -hmm. where we pretended what if valhalla was in night city and we worked with the uh, really cool folk at sukoban games to make that and enjoy the heck out of it. Uh, we have released several supplements, uh, Tales of the Red Street Stories, which is a nine mission adventure book, uh, Black Chrome, which has got 170 plus pieces of gear to add to your game, guns and vehicles and cyberware, uh, all kinds of really cool stuff, fashion, uh, and uh, but neat pieces of gear you can add to your thing cyber fingers those are always fun you know for when you just want one finger to be cybernetic yeah and, and which is a classic 2020 piece and then danger gal dossier danger gal is in the 2040 era uh run by michiko sanderson whose uh, original last name was arasaka mm -hmm. uh, she is saburo's granddaughter and uh, she is running a private detective slash intelligence slash security agency in Night City and the United States area uh, in the 2040s. Danger Gal is the name of it. And Danger Gal Dossier is a collection of uh, over 100 NPCs from various factions 
So it's not only uh, it's we, we jokingly call it a monster manual because it's got stat blocks for many different people that you can plug into your game as allies, as enemies, but more importantly, for people who are looking for uh, more information about the cyberpunk universe, it's, it's got lore about Maelstrom. And if you read closely, you'll figure out, hey, that's, you know, the start of where Maelstrom got kind of weirdly spooky and occultish. Mm hmm. It's got lore for the Tiger Claws, including uh, the early days of a certain fixer that you may meet in 2077 and get a job from. Uh, it has lore about the founding of Sixth Street and as well as other factions, uh, including NCPD, uh, Network 54 and gangs that you don't see in 2077, but exist in 2040s, like the Piranhas uh, mm -hmm. and Nomad groups. Uh, like the sightseers who are a small nomad pack working for the Altacados. So uh, that's really cool. Uh, we are, we'll be releasing in the fall, uh, Tales of the Red Forlorn Hope, right. which is a campaign book uh, that will be uh, six adventures all linked to designed to be played from beginning to end. The, the ones in street stories were each individual adventures you could run on their own in uh forlorn hope it will be a campaign you're supposed to run from start to finish and it will be basically the forlorn hope is a classic cyberpunk uh, institution a bar that was the heart of many adventures back in the day and uh in this campaign you'll decide its future you'll decide whether it lives or dies uh, your actions will uh help determine whether it survives past the 2040s wow okay. uh, so i'm, I'm re really excited to put that out and that's where we are right now. And that's coming out when, Jay? The the Forlorn Hope? In the fall. In the fall, okay. Of this year. Yeah, 20. It's For those of you listening in the future, it's 2024 right now. <laughs> uh, and it'll come out in the fall of 2024. Love it. Yeah, I remember the uh, the Forlorn Hope uh, book from the from the 2020s. So it's nice that yeah. we're paying homage to some of the stuff that we were doing back then. That's That's really cool. Um, okay. Yeah, so... it's, it's very cool. You've you got the the original writer Will Moss to come back and do some work on it for no us. No way. No way. Yeah, that is awesome. Oh, he could still write too. It's a, he. I, I gave him an assignment. He turned it in, and I was like, "Oh my god, I have like five changes, and this is brilliant." <laughs> you love when that happens, hey? When the, the the people who are working on something way back in the day are are still as enthusiastic about it. And, uh, yeah, it's know, really nice. Twenty thirty years later, that's awesome. Um, okay, so you guys have obviously. The Cyberpunk Edge Runners Mission Kit also coming out soon. Um, I know a yes. lot of people are very, very excited about this. Obviously, because the anime was very successful, they have um, big places in their hearts for each of these characters. I think some of the Edge Runners characters are some of the most beloved in the franchise. So um, maybe let's let's go over a little bit about the Mission Kit. What exactly it it is? Do you need Red to get this Mission Kit going off? Is this a brand new? Um, kit that you can just start and learn and start learning about the tabletop game for someone who's like new who wants to get into tabletop gaming uh, yeah let's let's hear a little bit about that sure uh, so uh, I'm gonna ramble a bit I apologize go for it uh, cyberpunk the cyberpunk edge runners mission kit is essentially really three things uh, for people who are new for role-playing games in general or people who are new to have played role-playing games but are new to cyberpunk red they want to play it, but they don't want to, you know, dish out the $60, I believe, is what the cost of the core rulebook is right now, um, or the $30 if you get digitally from Drive Through RPG. Uh, you'll be able to get the mission kit as sort of like a pay demo. Uh, it is a box set, or what we call a starter box, in the uh, RPG industry. Uh, it contains it's self-contained. You can get it. There's an adventure in it called the Jacket. It's very cool, uh, and uh, if you uh, get it the box. You'll be able to play, have enough rules and pre-generated characters, uh, dice, maps, everything that's in it to play that adventure. So you can have, uh, which is the adventure is about six to eight hours at least of role playing and, and gaming. So you'll be able to get it and play it for a couple of sessions, get a feel for it, decide if you like it or not, have a good time and move on, or you know, jump up to the full core rulebook if you want a little later on. Um, it comes with uh, a rule book, a lore book, and the adventure book. Uh, each is 40 pages. It comes with eight maps, uh, four 11 by 17 maps, including one of them, this gorgeous map of Night City. 
in the 2070s. Uh, that's 11 by 17. And if you really wanted to, you could put it in a frame and hang it up. I, I know I'm going to. Uh, it comes with dice, uh, Cyberpunk Edge Runner themed dice uh, in the yellow and the green, uh, 2D10s and 4D6s. It comes with seven pre generated characters. The art for each character was done by Studio Trigger, by the director of the anime uh, for us. It was beautiful stuff yes, that they worked. Yeah. And it comes with and standees, if you get the physical version, it comes with standees and tokens you can use to. You know, keep track of combat when you're in a fight because everybody knows if you're playing Cyberpunk Adventure, you're gonna have to throw down with somebody. Gotcha. Uh, so that's that's the first thing. It's a starter box. The second thing is if you're an existing Cyberpunk Red player, which if you are, thank you. Uh, if you're an existing Cyberpunk Red player, you will find uh, you'll know that we've stayed mostly in the 2045s, uh, 2040 as 2045s period specifically. Um, which means that certain technological advances haven't happened, certain cyber happen hasn't happened. You're not able to do quick hacking like V can in the video game or Lucy and Kiwi can in the anime. But uh, no longer will that be true because there will be rules in the Edge Runner's mission kit to let you play in the 2070s. There'll be some tweaks to the existing roles, which are what we call classes, to uh, uh, explain how they interact with the economy of the 2070s, since the economy of the 2070s is more robust than the 2040 period. Uh, there will be rules for power weapons, tech weapons, and smart weapons, as well as a number of new weapons from the video game slash anime, uh, new cyberware from the video game and anime like Mantis Blades and Gorilla Arms and model wires and projectile launch systems. And yes, David Sandeviston will be in there. Uh, it is not something you're going to be able to get at CareGen. I warn everybody now, or possibly ever. Um, David Sandy, I like to say David Sandy is a lot like Excalibur. There's really one of them, and uh, getting one is a unique quest in and of itself. Ooh, okay. uh, and, and, which we is that not a story we're telling? That's up to your GM. Um, and then finally, uh, there are quick hacks, and the quick hacks will be wonderful and fun. Uh, the quick hacks uh, will allow Netrunners to do cool things uh, through what's called a Neuroport. So uh, as we all know, uh, everyone in the 2070s seems to have a phone in their head. Uh, this is thanks to something called Neuroport. It is basically a piece of cyberware that's as ubiquitous then as its smartphones are to us in the modern day. And in fact, they change the world in a very similar way to smartphones uh, to the point where Basically, if you want to interact with the world, you almost have to have one. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's a piece of neuroware uh, that's stuck in your head, obviously. It comes with uh, the ability to connect to other um, machines via the, your personal link, that thing that comes out of your wrist. It's got uh, shard sockets in your neck. Uh, it does the holophone, uh, which allows you to communicate with other people and text uh, and uh, if you've ever wondered, wow, wow, why does everybody have cyber eyes? Because otherwise, how can they see their holophone? They don't. Your holophone in your neuroport connects to your optic nerve. So if you have meat eyes, you can still see your heads up display. Very cool. But the, the downside is, is that if you can call out, people can call in, right? So that's why quick hacking is a thing in the 2070s when it's not a thing in the 2040s. Yeah, you got to be you got to be uh, careful out there. Essentially, is what you're saying. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, also, I expect a lot of netrunners to suddenly find themselves to be targets much more often. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Okay, very, very cool. Uh, so, when it comes to the edge runners mission kit, like how? Do, how oh do gosh, I'm sorry. Just oh, sorry. One more thing. Done? Okay, keep going. Keep going. Point. I, I said it's three things, and the third thing is it is full of chuck full of new lore. Uh, there is a 40 page uh, lore book in there um, that lore uh, tells you never before things no, seen and heard things about the cyberpunk world about how it evolved from 2020 to 2045 to 2077 about um, uh, you, you'll learn some really neat cool things about the timeline about the uh, about the world at large about the way like neural ports work yes. like the whole thing where it's connected to the optic nerve um, also uh, there are biographies of all of the crew, all of Maine's crew, 
uh, Maine and David's crew. Maine, David, Lucy, Rebecca, Pilar, Dario, Falco, um, Kiwi. Uh, they're all in there. Uh, the uh, original writer of the anime uh, sat down, wrote us biographies, which we put in here. They are great. So awesome. you also learn how Pilar and Rebecca grew up in Night City or uh, where Maine comes from right. or uh, that Dario is, I'm going to give this away for free, was a professional bodybuilder. Yeah, I mean, I could see that. Definitely could see that. Yeah. <laughs> that's, uh, so, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, that's, there's some really cool stuff. So if you are someone who's just in it for the lore, that book alone is worth the price of entry. And the mission that comes with it, the jacket, mm -hmm. uh, we, we, we like to say it's kind of a coda uh, or an epilogue to the anime series. Uh, it's uh, the, the, the description we put out there is you'll have to, uh, a sad cowboy, a melancholy cowboy has had things stolen from him. You must go retrieve them. You must do it for Falco. You have to. I'm not say, you, I didn't say Falco. You have to. <laughs> I said a melancholy cowboy. Um, but the point being is that uh, there will be some cool, uh, you know, a way for, for fans to get a little bit of, you know, emotional closure, I think. Right. Uh, okay. After the events of the anime. I, selling, I can't promise. You're selling a lot perfect. of people on this emotional closure aspect of it. Yeah. I can't, I can't promise you'll feel a hundred percent better about, you know, the sad parts of yeah. the end of the anime. Spoiler, there's some sad parts of a cyberpunk genre uh, anime, but I can promise that there's, it will be, it'll, it'll tug at your heartstrings if you are a fan. Yes. And that is, sorry, that is the three things that we designed this product to be. We worked with CDPR and Trigger to Beautiful. make this product, uh, is, those three things. Is this the most collaborative project that you guys have undertaken in terms of uh, just ever? I mean, with CDPR and Trigger, um, seems uh, like there's a lot of collaboration here, right? Uh, well, as you know, we also do the Witcher RPG. True, and true, there's yeah. a lot of collaboration there. Uh, so I'm going to say that no. Uh, we have actually collaborated more actively with Witcher. Mm. Um, for example, in the design and creation of Erland of Larvik, the founder of the Griffin School uh, in Witcher, uh, which right. we, we created, but we work with CDPR to create him. Uh, so, but uh, for a cyberpunk product, uh, while we have you know had collaboration back and forth with them constantly since the beginning, um, this is the most we've done in terms of going uh, from their playground. It's certainly the t first time we've collaborated with two companies at the same time right. on a product. Right. Beautiful. Yeah, the third thing, how could we forget the lore? The lore is definitely something that no. I, I look forward to the most. And uh, for, 40 pages of lore, you said? I mean, yeah, 40 oh, pages of lore. Some of, it, some, some of it you'll already know, especially you. Okay. Because um, okay. you've dug deep. But you'll learn new things. I'm looking forward to your lore video that you're gonna you're gonna pull out of this one. Oh, 100 percent. I'm I'm just itching for some of that new, especially edge runners. I mean, like I feel like a lot of people want to know the backstories of some of the characters that they learned a little bit less about in the anime. So you guys are filling that gap nicely, and I, I really can't wait to read it to be honest. So, um, okay, beautiful. Um, so yeah, how did this idea come about? How was it pitched? Obviously, the the animated did uh, very well. It's kind of taught one of those highly touted animes these days um so like how did this conversation start uh and how is this like kind of pitched well uh it started uh in february of the year the anime came out okay um cdpr was kind enough to uh come out and bring on a physical media it's like they're like they came in and said we have all the episodes of the anime on this last drive and it must be in our site at all times and we're going to show it to you but uh there will always be someone with a flash drive, like handcuffed to the briefcase that it's in kind of thing. Right. Um, so they showed us the anime in advance and we watched it and we were just blown away. Now we knew, we knew things about the anime or, or I should say Mike did because they, they talked to him and they, you know, there was outlines. He was shown information, but this is the first time we really got to see it. We got to see it all at once. The whole thing, uh, the, our whole company, we mm -hmm. just watched it and we were blown away. And afterwards, Mike was like, okay, we absolutely have to do something with this. And uh, at the same time, we had sold out of the physical uh, Cyberpunk Red Jumpstart Kit, which was our starter box that we originally put out. Right. Um, and you know, so we had a choice. We can reprint this old Jumpstart Kit, or we can make something new. And since Ed Runners, um, there was something that, that Mike said at the time, was uh, some people play the TTRPG. Some people play Cyberpunk Red. More people 
play the video game. Mm-hmm. The most people watched the anime. Uh, if you, if you, so if you yes. like, it's like each one is an expanding circle of bringing new people in. Um, Cause you know, the, 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 a more people watch television than play video games, but the price of the barrier of entry on the anime is the lowest of the three, because if you have a Netflix subscription and you like anime, it's right there. True. Um, so uh, we decided, Hey, let's do this. So we put together the idea. Um, Mike took the lead on it and said, here's what I want in the box. You know, I want to do this. I want to do this. I want to do this. Um, he and I kicked around ideas for the, the mission. And, you know, we came up with uh, what was the, the initial concept of the jacket. Mm-hmm. We took it to CDPR and they said, okay, here it goes. And there was some back and forth. Like originally there was a discussion as to whether you would play um, David and his crew. Uh, Cause th- there was one thought that we might do a mission that takes place. There's a, there's a spoiler for the anime. There's a point in the anime where there's a transition from it being main's crew to David's crew. And you don't see much of what happens when it's David's crew, right. though you get the impression that David has over time grown a reputation yes, uh, yes. and his crew is getting more work. And we thought, well, maybe we'll do something there. But then we stopped and thought about it and we thought, well, if we're showing off the system, we want people to like our system. We've got to show off our life path system. Our life path system is a background generator we make for characters uh, in Cyberpunk, in Cyberpunk 2020, Cyberpunk Red. And we thought, hey, if you're playing characters who already have a background, you can't generate a life path for them. Mm-hmm. Also, we ran into what we call the Jedi problem. Uh, the Jedi problem in role-playing games is if you're playing Star Wars and you have a Jedi in the party, the Jedi tends to outshine everybody else. True. Um, and David, just we couldn't think it, there was no real way to to stat him where he just wasn't just blowing everybody else away in combat in a in a tabletop combat, uh, especially if we wanted to stat him the way that he deserved to be statted. So we thought we talk about it. We talked to CDPR. We all agreed we're going to make this a uh, we're gonna, it's going to take place after the anime. You're going to be playing original characters. And that's when Studio Trigger jumped in and said, hey, we'll design those characters for you. Our director would love to, to draw them. We're like, okay, yes, please. Absolutely. How can we say no to that? And there's the other thing. It's like once, once Trigger was in, we're like, new characters from them? Absolutely, you can be playing these new pregens. So it was, it was back and forth. Uh, and so that's the thing. We'd write, they'd, they'd read, they'd give us notes. We'd change right. back and forth, back and forth. And the nice thing is because there are things in red they haven't touched yet. We're able to bring those forward and say, well, you know, here's some cool things about how the world evolved from 2045 to 2077. Like, for example, we've been asked before in 2077, Haywood's on what we call the island, the big central portion of Night City that's more or less surrounded by water. In 2045, Haywood's on the mainland Mm -hmm. uh, to the east of the island. We We explain why that is in this book. Uh, we've always known, but it's the first time we really have gotten to say it in a, in a Canon product. Uh, um, so back and forth. And then, yeah, uh, it, it's just a matter of putting together a product with a lot of little pieces, getting CDPR, having meetings, uh, myself and Mike, and usually Patrick over at CDPR. And it was great. They were eager to get, get it done. We were eager to get it done. Um, Netflix was eager to, to see it done. Trigger was eager to see it done. We we're all really happy there's a bunch of geeks playing these games <laughs> so i guess that's when you uh that's when uh bartosz got involved um trigger yes. with, the, with the new design characters how like what was the process like that for that uh when it came to collaborating with those guys well uh, with bartosz it was very simple we said we have a page we have roughly this many words period yeah if you go over this many words we're going to run out of space for each of these people so write these backgrounds, please. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that was it. I mean, because there was nothing to tell him. Sure. Uh, they, these characters came from his head. They lived in his head. He told that story. Uh, with Studio Trigger, with Trigger, it was a little more complicated um, because the characters have to look like their stat blocks because um, mm-hmm. each of these pre generated characters have stats that we give you. So uh, our designer, James Hutt, sat down and he made stat blocks for each of those characters. And we're not going to present the stat blocks to them because maybe they don't play the game. We don't need them to learn the game to do the art. So he wrote what are called art scripts. Right. We said, okay, it's the character looks, you know, we like the character to look kind of like this. The character has this cyberware 
Um, here's some pictures of cyberware from the video game mm -hmm. or from the anime to, to explain it. And not, not that they don't know, but you, you always go in with an artist saying, you know, here's what's in my head. Uh, they are carrying this, this weapon and same thing, we show them the weapon. And as anybody who's seen the enemy knows, the studio trigger is amazingly good at like taking a look at some other property, like the video game saying, okay, how do we make that into anime? And then we said, anything else, you know, that's up to you. you know, we're not gonna tell you how to art. Right. And that's what they turned back. So like, so basically we told them they need to have the cyberware. They need to have this gun. Anything else is fine. And up, that's what we got. Up to them, eh? Let yeah. The, let now, the creatives creative. Yeah, I mean, sometimes we, we get very specific with art in general because, uh, mm -hmm. like, um, we we reuse characters in Cyberpunk Red, uh, and it's not to save on anything. It's just that we like having characters show up again and again. There's great familiarity. Um, it makes a content of roles. and people like just like favorites, which is why Johnny Silverhand exists, for example, um, because if someone people bonded to and wanted to and wanted to see again uh and so we'll say hey you're drawing this character it has to look like this you have no choice but other times like um in forlorn hope well we have a character called uh, a pair a couple named nana and pop uh, sorry nana and pop pop mm -hmm. and they're this old couple that own a drugstore and when i say a drugstore i don't mean it's a pharmacy i mean it's a store that sells drugs um and they're like old hippies and we said, they're old hippies. She has a cyber arm. You know, he's got a pot belly and a beard. <laughs> and otherwise, have at it. And they did, uh, the artist did amazing. I can't wait for people to meet Nana and Pop Pop. I expect them to be fan favorite characters. My, uh, my headcanon for these characters are the, the hillbilly cup, uh, couple from the 2018 Cyberpunk trailer. I don't know if anyone remembers that one, but that, that's... that's uh... Now, that's immediately where my brain went to when you were mentioning those, but that's that's hilarious. Um, yeah, it, it's great. I, I love working with artists, and our art director is great at getting the best out of them uh, while giving them uh, a fair amount of freedom because uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a balancing act with right. any existing IP. Right, right. Yeah, and, and I'll throw some, some images of uh, some of the characters uh, up on screen in, in the video here, but... Yeah, I think they, they really pay homage nicely to the, like, they strike that nice balance between, like, the 90s old school aesthetic and obviously, like, the, the vibrancy of what we can do, like, modern day with with uh, designs and colors and things like that. And uh, I think they look great. I'm, I'm really excited to see some of the more, uh, some more of the art and the, the lore book. But uh, yeah, I, I think the, these characters the are Netrunner, fantastic. Yeah. The, the Netrunner gives me strong, strong fifth element vibes and when you see it you'll you'll immediately know which character i'm thinking of yeah yeah love these guys um okay very very cool um so when it comes to new gameplay mechanics anything interesting that will excite the tabletop crowd i know you touched on it briefly um sure yeah yeah let's hear about that so uh like i said we'll have smart weapons tech weapons and uh power weapons and they are more or less model after the video game to some degree. Power weapons can ricochet shots. Tech weapons can allow you to see through certain kinds of cover and shoot through that cover. Um, and uh, smart weapons are work more or less like smart guns always have, but they have certain advantages that um, in the old game, in, in 2020 in red, uh, smart links were something you added to a gun. And this, they come inherent uh, in the weapon and they don't require anything other than a way to connect to the gun, uh, which is really cool. Plus the improved ammunition you can use in them is a much better version of what already exists. Uh, and then um, with uh, quick hacking, uh, which will be a big thing, uh, there's two levels of quick hacking. Uh, the first is for people who are just playing with the box set, uh, just the box set by itself. And it's relatively simple and fast. Uh, you have to connect to someone first. And once you connect, you can start quick hacking as long as they don't have existing security. If they have security, you've got to bypass that security first. Um, once you're inside, it is possible to kick someone out of your head, um, but it requires you to take an action, which means you're not shooting that round. So uh, there's some action economy uh, tricks you can do there. Uh, if you are playing with a more a fuller Cyberpunk Red, uh, basically everybody's head becomes a net architecture. Uh, which you can work with the existing uh, cyberpunk uh, red 
uh, net running rules, including leaving viruses at the bottom of their the net architecture. So yes, you can leave viruses in people's heads, mm -hmm. which is really cool. And then uh, cyberware, there's just some really cool new cyberware uh, of all sorts. And we also cover, we cover uh, 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 the drugs that Maine and David were taking, the, you know, the, the immunosuppressants, only they're not, yeah, they're not just immunoblockers. Uh, that's what they, they're called because it's easy, it's shorthand, right. but they actually are, they're a cocktail of antipsychotics, antidepressants, uh, immunoblockers, and other drugs, all designed to work together to uh, stop uh, you from sliding into cyberpsychosis. Right. Um, and the thing about them is, is they become less effective over time. And eventually, uh, they're almost as bad a cure as they are. Uh, the, they're almost, the cure is almost as bad as the cause the disease sort of thing. Uh, so there are rules for rules for those rules for David Sandy and uh, a lot, a decent amount of other cyberware. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, that's the big thing. Those are the big rule changes. Oh, sorry. One other thing is we talk more about humanity loss in cyberpunk red. We have a concept called humanity. The idea being is um, the more humanity you have, the more connected you are with the world around you, the less humanity you have, the more disconnected you Come when you reach negative humanity, uh, you start engaging and in, uh, slipping into cyber psychosis because you are uh, cyber psychosis is not actually an illness. Cyber psychosis is sort of like a generic popular term for a number of different disassociative disorders. Mm -hmm. And uh, but you start slipping into a negative humanity. Uh, but we are including rules in this about how to regain humanity. For through life affirming events or lose humanity through negative events in your life. And so the idea is it's not just get cyberware, lose humanity and get therapy, gain humanity. It's live life, right. lose humanity sometimes, gain humanity sometimes. And life is a constant struggle of connecting and disconnecting and, and isolating and depression and um, being buoyed by success. Right. Uh, and uh, it, it's a little more bookkeeping, but it creates a much more fluid uh, humanity system right. uh, than it's existed before. Yeah, a little bit more nuanced. Hey, I, I, I really like that approach. I, I feel like yeah. that's a logical next step in that. Um, how, how wacky are we getting with these uh, cyberware, these new cyberware enhancements, these new drugs? Are we going like off the off the uh, off the bend here? Like. I remember some of my favorite ones were like the cyber pillow and the original one, the, the roller skates, um, you know, interesting ones like that. Are we getting, are we getting into so, wacky ter territory here? We have actually already added cyber pillow in one of our DLCs and oh, um, the okay. skates, uh, our skate feet are actually in cyberpunk red core, I believe. Um, so we're not getting wacky like that uh, with the mission kit. It's a case of, we didn't include anything. You don't see any anime. The anime was our touchstone. So gotcha. if you didn't see any anime, it's not going to be in here. Um, most of the cyberware and weapons you see in the anime are in this uh, mission kit. Mm -hmm. Though I think there's a few things that aren't, they're very specific one-time things that we haven't really touched on. Um, and we'll probably touch on them at, at some future and some future product, but we're not, we didn't deal with them now because uh, there's only so much room. Uh, I only had 40 pages gotcha. for each, gotcha. uh, each book. Yeah, so staying as true to the anime as possible, essentially. Yeah, I mean, that's basically it. We, you know, we want people who come. To, there'll be people who maybe pick us up. They've seen the anime. They've never played a video game, mm -hmm. for example. Mm -hmm. And we want them to be able to say, oh, cool. I recognize this thing. I remember seeing this in episode blah. Right. Cool. Um, so in terms of testing, how, how has that gone? What was testing? How has, like, what does testing look like? Um, for the edge runners mission kit, I know you you say when when it gets into the player's hand, that's when you can really see um, how players are interacting with that. But what is like the internal testing uh, stages? Look sure. Like? Yeah. Um, so we we do play testing uh, on in in two. We do two types of play testing. First is internal play testing. Um, that's where we take the designs and we play with them ourselves. And sometimes that's really boring. We'll literally sit down and we'll write spreadsheets to determine results of die rolls. Um, if you do this and this and this, this is the result. And if we can duplicate the results multiple times, we get a curve and it's all kinds of math. Um, James Hutt, uh, who is the lead designer uh, of the game play mechanics on this project is really good at that. Mm -hmm. um, 
and, and we'll also do full runs where we'll play things. Uh, and then we take it to playtesting. In this case, we playtested in multiple ways. Uh, the first playtesting we did was literally a, here are the guns, go fight. And it was just a combat scene with no plot. It was just, everybody had a different gun and they fought other people who had different guns. And then it was determined, we, we got the results. We said, you know, how did it feel? Did it do this thing? Did it do that thing? You know, did you run out of ammo too quickly? Uh, was there a moment where you were able to use this feature of the gun? Why didn't you use that feature of the gun if you weren't able to? That sort of thing. Right. Uh, we look at that. We, um, the nice thing is, is by this point, we know what we're doing in terms of balance. Mm -hmm. So we know that if, uh, if a weapon has this many damaged dice, it's going to be this powerful. Uh, that's pretty easy to do. But the playtesting allowed us to see uh, a better idea of how it worked. Then when that was done, uh, we went back and we started working on the adventures that comes with it, the jacket. Uh, James wrote the first iteration of it. We play tested it. Um, we saw some changes need to be made. We made more changes. We play tested it again. Uh, we kept play testing uh, a few different iterations, tweaking here, tweaking there. Uh, this worked, that didn't. Uh, this particular section wasn't as exciting as this particular section because it felt too much like they were the same section. Mm -hmm. So it needed a, you needed a different gameplay mechanic basis um, so that the encounters felt different and unique. And that's it. Yeah, so, uh, and w with playtesting, it's just generally we have, a, we have a Discord, a company Discord, like everybody does this, these days. Right. We, every once a year or so, we recruit, we, we, we recruit a whole bunch of playtesters. We give them material for not only this, uh, Cyberpunk, but also for Shadow Scar, which is our upcoming game that Cody's putting out, Cody Pondsmith, mm -hmm. uh, which is an original IP. Um, and for James's upcoming game, Fossilized Violence, which is Dinosaurs versus Cavemen. Uh, and uh, it's just, you keep going, you keep hammering at it. And uh, also, you know, there's non playtest playtesting where we basically say, hey, here's the thing. What do you think of the thing? And they tell us what they think of the thing. Because right. sometimes it's hard to play test cyberware, for example, if it's not a weapon. Because it, if it's like, oh wow, that's a piece of cyberware. How do you play test that? So we just we just solicit feedback from people. Gotcha. Okay. Very interesting. Um, Jay, what are you most excited for people to experience? What What is that one thing that's just popping in your brain right now? It's like I can't wait for people to get their hands on this certain aspect of it. Oh man, I just you know, I just want them to have fun. I want them to have a wow moment. I everybody's wow moment's different. So if if you're the kind of person who like looks at this stuff and you like to homebrew stuff, um, and you look into and say, oh wow, I see how they did this. I can see how I can adapt this to do something else, like make this new gun or this new piece of cyberware or this new rule system that they didn't do. I I hope for that person gets that. If you're really into lore. And nice. I, I hope you, you get to page 52. Um, it, there's only four pages, so 32. And you learn something. You go, oh, wow, I didn't know that. And that is awesome. Yes. Um, if you're, you know, really into role playing um, or, you know, you're a fan of uh, there, there's a there's a part at the very end of the adventure. Uh, if you play through all the way, and you hit this scene and you might not because role playing is role playing and every session is unique. But if you hit that part. I hope that you know there's a, that person goes, wow, that was a really cool, emotionally resonant moment because I really love the anime. Mm -hmm. um, so that's all. You know, I don't want. I'm excited for them to get everything, but I just I'm excited to see people hit those wow moments and what those wow moments are change from person to person. But I hope there's a wow moment in there for everyone who picks it up. Yeah, yeah. I'm. I mean, my, my wow moment is most definitely going to be in that lore. I'm going to absolutely devour that lore in probably about a day, but. Uh, yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see. I'm sure you guys will get some new tabletop players into the mix. Uh, I'm going to look into getting a, a game started when the Edge Runners kit uh, drops. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to um, the whole kit, the mission kit. The jacket sounds absolutely amazing as well. So people will be able to fill in the gaps with the in between that anime there and the game. So uh, really, really exciting times ahead. So, Jay, where, where can people get the Edge Runner kit uh, what's the date that's uh, that it's releasing? Uh, let's hear about that. Sure. Uh, so we are releasing it uh, mid to late June. 
Uh, we don't have a specific date yet. Uh, we're waiting for it. It's at the printer. So this is the exciting part. It's at the printer. I know it's at the printer because the printer sent me proofs and I sent them back. And so it's, everything's approved and it's getting printed. That's very exciting. If you were into printing, that would be so exciting to you. Um, uh, but it's, they, we, they're going to give us a date a little later on once they have a better idea of how long it's going to take to, sh to finish and ship. But it's going to hit our sometime mid to late June. It'll be available in our web store then. It'll be available on Drive-Thru RPG in a digital format at the same time. Uh, we'll release it in our web store, which is physical, um, uh, and, and Drive-Thru RPG digitally. And the digital one obviously does not come with the physical dice. I'm sorry. Uh, but the price will be adjusted accordingly. Um, and then it takes a little longer to filter through the supply chains because it's got to go through distribution and to, to, sh uh, to retailers. But we're hoping to start seeing it in stores uh, in the United States in July and August. It may take a little longer, uh, even for Canada, because of the way the international shipping works. Uh, yeah. But we're hoping to see it in the fall uh, in Europe, Australia, Canada, and the like. I know we'll see it in Canada because our distributor in Canada is always gung-ho to order the new stuff. Uh, it's just a matter of time. Uh, if you're looking to order it on day one, first of all, please watch your social media. We are Artel Zorian Games everywhere. Uh, Though the biggest place to get information is Twitter or our Discord or our website at artelzoriangames.com. If you are looking uh, to get it on day one, uh, you'll go to artelzoriangames.com and go to our web store from there and you'll be able to buy it from there. Um, if you are looking to get it digitally, you will drive through rpg.com and just do a search for Edge Runner's Mission Kit and you'll find it there. Uh, it'll be in place. If you get it digitally, I promise it will be hyperlinked and bookmarked because uh, uh, that is my hobby. Uh, <laughs> I would do that even if I wasn't getting paid for it. Love it. Yeah, I'll have all the, the links in the description there uh, and on screen so you guys will know exactly where to go to, to grab your copy. And they, yeah, there, there better be availability in Canada. It's, uh, Canada yep. always gets shafted. So there, there, there is absolutely uh, Lion <laughs> Rampant is the, is our distributor, and they've been very good about ordering in large numbers. So it's just a matter of if your local store yeah. orders from them and orders it. If by the way, uh, I don't know when you plan on releasing this, but uh, if this is before August, which I assume it is, and you're going to Gen Con, we will also have it there at our booth. Cool. Okay. So make your way down to Gen Con, guys, and uh, get it get yep. it early. Snap it up early. Well, it'll, it'll be a little late, but it'll still be there because yeah. uh, Gen Con is in the beginning of August. Oh, is it in August? So, okay, gotcha. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, Jay, appreciate the time. Was there anything else you wanted to mention about the Edge Runners mission kit? What can we expect from Altar Story in 2025, 2026, and beyond? Anything that you can mention? Uh, oh, no, no, no nothing I can secret. mention. No, it's it's top secret. We'll probably be saying more about it at Gen Con. Gen Con is when we tend to do our. It's our E3. It's when we tend to. Do, yeah. I guess E3 is not really a thing anymore. It's our video game award show. I guess is what the the replacement for E3 is these days. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, where we where we will have a seminar and we'll really talk about it and then we'll share the same information on our website. Um, and it is big things. We're working on some huge things. The next three projects are all bangers. Um, must have books in my opinion. So I'm really excited about that. Uh, I say that we will continue to put out a free DLC on our website every month. So if you're playing our, uh, Cyberpunk Red and you just want more content and you're like, oh, wow, I haven't gotten new content in right. 30 days, go to our website and there'll be something new there. Uh, if you are looking for something that's not Cyberpunk, uh, I mentioned Shadow Scar before. That is, I described it as Stargate with Ninjas. Um, it is a new game. Uh, with a new universe, uh, it's a multi-dimensional. Uh, you're, you're part of a multi-dimensional secret organization that goes to different worlds, different uh, dimensions to stop uh, the evil monster types uh, Oni from uh, causing havoc. Uh, and it's a new system. And it's by Cody Pondsmith, uh, the lead designer on Cyber on The Witcher, and a designer on Cyberpunk, and Mike Pondsmith's uh, son. Sounds, At least upon Smith's son. That's important. Bad, badass. Yeah, so we're looking inside that. The uh, if you happen to be doing free RPG day uh, this year at your local gaming store, uh, it will be uh, there will be a starter, uh, a free starter uh, booklet, quick start booklet at free RPG day, 
And if you are at Gen Con, that's when we will release for the first time the starter box, which is sort of like the Edge Runner mission kit uh, for Shadow Scar. And then the core book releases at the end of the year. Lovely. Exciting times ahead. Very. Uh, very much looking forward to uh, everything that you guys are, are going to be releasing. And uh, I'm very happy that you guys have, you know, continued to put out all this excellent cyberpunk stuff, especially. Yeah. But... Well, I'll say this. If you want to make some cool lore videos and you don't have the books, go talk to Rob. Rob is our social media ambassador. That's what I, the position I had the last time we talked. Um, talk to him. Get him to send you some of the PDFs because you can get a couple of videos out of, of lore out of those books if you really wanted to. Rob, if you're if you're watching this, I'm gonna be spamming you with emails, so you better yeah. you better, better get your inbox ready. Um, awesome. Thank you so much, Jay, for taking the time to to chat a little bit about uh, the new projects and the Edge Runners mission kit. Um, yeah, we'll have to do this again when when the new stuff comes out, and uh, yeah, expect some some lore videos as well can't wait to start covering it again absolutely uh it's always a pleasure to talk to you i am so glad that you're doing so well because uh, uh you deserve it much appreciated i mean so much thank you so much jay um, you're welcome okay let's let's wrap it up here and uh i'll, I'll chat with you later